Okay, I think this is going to make a lot of sense to you. <clears throat> First off, you've done a wonderful job getting to this point right here where you've got your two derivatives. Now, you also, and I took the liberty of drawing your graph that you had up above just to kind of compress everything into one view here. So let's talk about this sign chart over here. We know that one-third makes the first derivative zero. So you've got one-third, zero. Beautiful. Now, when I put a big positive value, something to the right of one-third, like let's just say 10, just anything over here to the right. If I put in 10 here, this is 4e to the negative 30th, but that is 4 on e to the 30th. That's a positive. 4e to the negative 30th is 4 on e to the 30th times 1 minus 30, and that is definitely a negative. So to the right of 1 third, we've got a positive times a negative. This is negative. And now if I put a big negative in here, or just anything to the left of 1 third, for instance, 0. If I put 0 in here, this becomes 4 times e to the 0th e to the zeroth is 1, this becomes 4 times 1 minus 3 times 0, that's 1 minus 0, 1, we're actually positive to the right. And the good news about that, take a look what your graph's doing. You had the graph. The graph's going up as it comes in from the right. It's going up as it comes in from the right until it gets to 1 third. And then forever after that, it's going down, even though just barely down, it's still going down over here. So we got a really tight marriage between these three items. Now your second derivative is 0 at 2 thirds, perfect. I mean, wonderful job here. Second, second derivative is 0 at 2 thirds. If I put something bigger than 2 thirds in, let's say 10, I get negative 6 times or negative 6 on e to the 30th, a negative. If I put a negative here, I get 4 minus 6 times 10, another negative, and this is positive, which means the graph is cupping up. Whatever it looks like, it's cupping up. And take a look. From right here, somewhere in here is 2 thirds. The graph is cupping down, cupping down, and it changes to cupping up. And you showed that on your graph. It's cupping up to the right. <clears throat> if I put something to the left of 2 thirds, like 0, I get negative 6 times 4 minus 0. I get negative 24. That is a negative to the left of here. That means it's cupping. It could be going up, but cupping down could be going down, cupping down. It could be going up and then coming back down, but it's definitely cupping down to the left. So cupping down, even though it's going up, it's cupping down here, cupping down until right here at two-thirds, and it has to start cupping up at some point. So we got a really, really tight marriage between our concave, our second derivative, and our second derivative. Okay. Likewise, first derivative, increasing, decreasing, it's going down. Look, the graph's going down here, up here. As we come left to right, it's going up. And the, and the common mistake people make is, like, oh, it's going down as we go to the left. Well, what's it doing as we're coming in from the left? It's going up. This is positive slope till here, then negative slope after there. Um, so. The good news is a wonderful, wonderful job getting to these tough, that tough second derivative. Awesome. Um, what, what's eluded you a little bit is this whole sign chart and how it kind of blends in with your graph. Because your graph could have told us the whole story. Hey, this is cupping down and then cupping up. It's going up and then going down. But we can also put values in, and that's important when we don't know what the graph looks like. In this case, maybe we can graph, maybe we can figure out what the graph looks like and I could just immediately say, oh, it's concave to the left, convex to the right. It's cupping down and then cupping up. It's rising before it falls. Rising, falls. Uh, 
either either way, please let me know how that goes for you. Thanks.